Hello everybody and welcome back to the Golang programming tutorial. So in this video what we're going to be doing is talking about chain conditionals. Now chain conditionals are very similar to conditions, are they kind of adding on and extending on what we just did in the last video, but essentially this is a way that we can combine multiple boolean expressions or conditions, whatever you want to call them, together to get one answer. So previously we had something like this, right, like maybe we had 5 less than 7, and that was going to obviously be equal to true. Now the idea is that we want to actually make more of these. So we want to have one larger expression that maybe checks more than one thing. And if you've done any kind of logic classes before, you've seen truth trees or truth tables, you'll probably know what these are. But we have these operators, um, which are what are they called here? I got to look at the formal name, the logical operators, which is and or and not. And the way we use them is we put them in between sets of Boolean expressions and based on whatever this means, and I'll talk about them in a second, we evaluate the whole thing, we check all of the expressions, and then we get one answer, either true or false. So if I said like 5 is less than 7 or 7 is greater than 9, this is the OR operator, I'll talk about this in a second. What this says is let's evaluate this, what is this equal to? Is it true or false? Well, this is true, so we put true there. What is this? Is this true or false? Well, this is false. So now we have true or false, right? So now we check, well, what does or mean? In this case, or just checks whether one of the two values is true. So that means this whole thing would become true. So that's called chaining conditionals together when we kind of combine them with these logical operators. So the operators that we have is not or and and. Now these are the way that you write them. This is very similar to other programming languages. Uh, this means not. Now what not does is just reverse whatever it is that you have. So if I have true, then not true equals false. If I do not false, that equals true. If I do um, not not true, that's true because you say, okay, not the not of true. So that's false. The not of false is true. So you can imagine that this can get quite complex when we start adding all these things together. But you can put this exclamation point before, like I can do something like not um, seven less than five. And then this will actually be true because, well, this is false. Then you not it, that becomes true, right? So that's the idea behind that one. Okay, so that's the not operator. Now this is the or operator. The or operator pretty much tells you if there is true on the left or right hand side of the uh, the expression. So if I do something like, you know, true, oops, what the heck, true or false, that gives me actually the value of true. If I say true or true, that's true because yes, there is at least one true on the left or right hand side. But if these were both false, so if I do false, false, then this whole thing is false because there is no true anywhere. So that's or it checks if either of them are true or both of them are true. If both of them are true, that's fine as well. And finally, what and does is and tells us if both of them are true. So it's very similar to English, right? Like true and false would be false. Oops, that's not an and sign. True and false would be false because there's a false here because they're not both true. But true and true is obviously true. So that's how you use and, or, and not. Now I'm just going to do a few examples here and just show you uh, kind of the output of these things just so you can kind of guess and have some way to check whether you really do understand this. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll be on to the next video. So true or false um, and true, right? So what happens when I do something like this? Now, this is the question. I'm actually going to look up the president precedence of these. Um, I believe what happens is that ands are evaluated false. Okay, so I've written this example true or false and true. Now looking at this, you try to determine what the answer is actually going to be here. Now this is weird because we're using two different operators, right? So we have the or and we have the and. So we have to determine how we're going to evaluate these because um, based on the way that we evaluate them, this could be different, right? Because if I evaluate true or false first, then that's true, right? So then that becomes true and true, and this whole thing will be true. But if I evaluate, evaluate false and true first, then this whole thing is going to be false here, right? So that's going to be false. Then we have true or, um, in this case, false, which will give us true. But sometimes there is instances where based on the order you evaluated them in, you'll get different answers. So just keep that in mind. In this case, it doesn't matter because we have this true or, um, you know, happening, but still. Okay, so let's just run this and I'll just see actually what the answer is here to make sure that we're getting this correct. So that gives us the value of true as we expected. 
Now let's change this around and let's make um, add some brackets or something or do something crazy. So let's do true or false. Okay, true or false. And I'll put that in brackets and then and false. So what do you think this is going to happen? Well, whenever you see an and and you see a false anywhere in it, you immediately know that's going to be false because, well, both sides aren't true, right? So if you run this, we will see that the answer is false. Now, what happens if I actually go like this and I put a not in front of that false? Well, then what we get, if we look at this here, will be the answer of true because this will become true and then this is true. So we and them together we get true. Now, of course, we could keep going and add more ors and more ands. And we can even throw in variables and expressions here too. Like I can do or x is I guess I can't say x eight is less than nine, right? Or we can go up here, we can say x colon equals eight. And I'll just put x here. And we can chain all of these things together. So just because I'm writing true and false doesn't mean you just have to write true and false. Uh, but you just need to have an expression that evaluates to true or false, right? So this will be valid. Let's have a look at what this one's going to be and see what we get we get true okay i guess x is less than nine right so we have that or uh and that's the idea behind this that we can just chain all these things using the and ors and not and it will get a little bit complicated when you write these really large chained conditionals but you can also do things like chain chained conditionals right like if i have um val is equal to that and then i have val 2 colon equal um you know val or false like you can separate them out into separate lines if it starts getting crazy when it's going too long if you're doing these kind of expressions um so that's the idea behind chain conditionals i'm trying to think if there's anything else i can show you guys and i can't really think of anything off the top of my head so just remember that what we can do is well we can chain these things with or and and not or checks whether one of the two things on the left or right hand side is true or both of them that's fine and checks if both of the things are true and the not will simply reverse whatever you have. So if it's false, it goes true. If it's true, it goes false. And if you did two nots, then that would cancel out because that would be, you know, not not false. And that's a double negative. So that's just the uh, cancels it out. Right. OK, so that has been chain conditionals. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like subscribe and I will see you in the next Golang tutorial.